These notes are about periodic functions. So this is a family of functions, and not like other functions we've studied, there's not a way that a periodic function has to look. But there is something that's true about all periodic functions. A periodic function has a repeating pattern of y values. Let's see what that might look like. Here's an example of a periodic function. How about something that goes like this? If you look from left to right, our y values increased and then decreased and then increased and then decreased a lot and then increased and then decreased and then increased a lot and we can see that that pattern continues over and over again. So that's a periodic function. I can see there's a definite periodicity to that graph. There's a pattern in the y values. A non-example might look something like this. There's definitely a pattern there. But it's not periodic, because if you think of the actual y values, those numbers are not repeating over and over. There's a steady incline, so I'm not getting the same exact y values over and over again. Let's think about some vocabulary words associated with periodic functions. If you have a periodic function, you can identify one pattern or one cycle. So let's define cycle as one complete pattern. If you look at the periodic function I have drawn below, I can see that one cycle might go from here to here. That was one complete pattern. That red pattern will continue over and over. Or maybe you didn't see that as one cycle. Maybe you thought about starting here, and you said one complete cycle looks like that. That's also true. So there's more than one way you can view one cycle, as long as you're making sure you're getting one complete pattern. Wherever you end is the corresponding starting point for the next pattern. The horizontal length of that cycle is the period. So in this example, let's just look at that green outline of one cycle that I saw. I started right here and ended right there. That represented one full cycle. What was the horizontal length of that? Well, that went from negative 4 to 2, so the period in this case, for this particular example, is equal to 6. That was the horizontal length. No matter how you view the cycle, whether it was that first red way or the green way, you st still should always get the same value for the period. It should always be 6 units long, regardless of where you start um, an end, because if, as long as you're starting and ending in a correct spot, it should be six units long. But if we start at zero, let's see, we went up and then to the right and then down and then to the right and then up a little bit, and here's the corresponding starting point of the next pattern, and you can see that the purple way I've drawn out the cycle is still six units long. So no matter where we start and stop, as long as we're tracing one full cycle, the period is six. Our next vocab word is amplitude, and that is half the height of the function. An algebraic way of obtaining half the height is you could think of the maximum value minus the minimum value. That would give you the height. And then to get half of it, you divide by 2. So in this case, you could see I've drawn in that our max value was 5. Our min value was negative 5. So we have 5 minus negative 5 all over 2, which is 10 over 2 which is 5. So our amplitude is 5, half the height of the whole function. So those are some vocab words associated with periodic functions. Why are periodic functions important? The graph of a periodic function, f, is shown below. And I'd like to know f of 106. I don't want to have to graph this function all the way out to 106 on the x-axis. So let's see if we can figure out something about this function. Can you figure out what the period of this function is? Well, let me highlight one cycle, and these cycles are pretty easy to see. I think one of those almost like trapezoid looking pieces, and the horizontal length from 2 to 6 is 4. That means that every 4 units, the y values repeat themselves. So if I want to think of f of 106, let me just subtract off 4. That's the same as f of 102. Mm, I still don't know f of 102. Let me subtract 4 again. That's the same as f of 98. 
still don't have f of 98. I can keep subtracting multiples of 4 until I get down to something between negative 10 and 10 that I can actually see. Or you could think of, if we just keep doing that, we'll eventually get down to 6, really. Because if you think of 106 as... 100 plus 6, and 100 is a multiple of 4, then you could see clearly that that's going to be the same as f of 6. I guess before 6 you'd maybe also get to f of 10 before that, but I can really clearly see that 106 is 100 plus 6, a multiple of 4 plus 6. That's why recognizing the period is really important. What is f of 6? Well, that I can just kind of look and see that f of 6 is equal to 0. So that's our answer. F of 106 is the same as F of 6, which is the same as 0. So recognizing that pattern saved us a lot of graphing. I didn't want to have to graph that really far out. I just used the pattern to my advantage. Why do we care about periodic functions all of a sudden? I thought we were talking about trigonometry. Well, just for fun, consider this function F of X equals sine of X. What happens to sine of x as you move around and around and around in the circle? So as x is growing, as your angle is growing, even past 360, past 2 pi, past 3 pi, 4 pi, what's happening to sine of your angle? Well, remember, sine was like your y value. Let me try to graph these as I'm thinking about them. Right here, your y value was 1. Then your y value went back down to 0. Then it went down to negative 1. Then it went back to 0. Then it went back to positive 1. Then it went back down to 0. So I've already gone kind of one and a half times around the circle. Hopefully you can kind of visualize what's going on. We're going to get something along the lines of this. Which, after talking about periodic functions, that to me looks pretty periodic. What do you think the period is? How far around the circle did we go until the y values started repeating themselves? We went all the way around once, and then our y values started repeating themselves. So after 360 degrees, or 2 pi, we started having the exact same pattern. So this is an example of a periodic function, and that's why we care about periodic functions right now in our trigonometry unit, because it turns out sine of x, cosine of x, tangent of x, those end up being periodic. So hopefully we'll have a chance to investigate those a little bit. Good luck!